So on March 15th, 2014, there was a draft Netrunner tournament at the Complete Strategist in New York City. Here are the, both of the games I played in round four. Showing off the data sucker I drafted. I think I'm the only one who had one. Let's see how useful it can be. I'm on the right, running. Chris, who you've seen a lot of my videos, is on the left with his custom uh, self-modifying code playmat that he had made. I know someone's going to ask about it. I know you're going to ask about our play tokens. I know you're going to ask about all kinds of things that everyone always asks. Where would you get that token from? What are those things you're using? Guys, you can Google. You can look at YouTube descriptions. You can look at other videos I posted, other comment threads. You don't need to ask it again. All right, also... This is round four. I also recorded, I had enough battery to also record round three, but in round three I ended up getting matched up against a player who was super new, had only played a handful of games, was actually really smart uh, just in general, good at games in general, but his lack of Netrunner experience made the games unexciting, um, and also uh, the video didn't come out too well. <laughs> you can see here we're like adjusting the the position so you can see everything all right but yeah these two games uh you know two very experienced netrunner players forced to play with crappy draft decks we both drafted okay right you know you saw my draft already i posted that in another video go check that out if you haven't seen it um but yeah we both had not drafted before so you know, while our play was fine, our drafting was, you know, not the most excellent. So what happens when we get matched up? Forced to play Netrunner, right? With, uh, with not the greatest cards in the universe. But not bad cards, just, you know. It's not the kind of Netrunner you're used to seeing, right? Where everyone comes in with their prepared, perfect championship, highly tuned decks that have been through the fire and forged in the magma of cyberspace. Instead, it's um, like a little shiv that you, you found on the ground and stole it from a, from a homeless guy and uh, trying to cut off the other guy's cyber feeder with it. <laughs> okay, mulligans. I did not mulligan. Yeah, I mean, drafting, you know, has its has its good sides and bad sides. You know, we've spent a lot of time talking about the problems with drafting, why we're probably not going to do it too often, if ever again, um, you know, cost issues and whatnot. But uh, here, you will see in this video, the good part of drafting. What, you know, the best... The best thing about drafting is, is you're going to see right now in these two games. So, despite... Uh, on his mulligan, he got a beanstalk and two ice. I started off with a data sucker and a face planted a rotor turret. Yeah, I probably should have drafted that rotor turret, shouldn't I have? Yep. Uh, well, that's a shame. There goes my data sucker that I installed turn one, hoping to load up with counters. Probably should have run before <laughs> installing it, but hey. And taking some credits, making some runs. Okay, so so far the corp is well ahead here. I lost the my most valuable card, <laughs> MVC in the trash. So, okay. Rain HQ, he let me in there. So, who knows what that ice is? It's going to the remote. Not advancing. Probably just like a pad campaign, right? So I get my imp, <laughs> MVC number two, the second most valuable card. Oh, it's a Hokusai. Oh, I was expecting to blow up a pad campaign. Shit, I lost my peacock. Might have needed that, <laughs> uh, but I imped his Hokusai, which is still a good deal. Draw some cards back, okay. Taking a lot of money. Oh, I got an Armitage. That's where I'm getting my monies from. That's where every runner's getting their monies from in the draft. Busting code. All right. The 
Roto Turret has been further defended. You have to defend R and D in the draft when you got all those three pointers in there, right? Um, you know, and you're only playing is six points. Oof, got to defend R and D. There's, there's, and the only way to, but since you have three pointers, the only way to score them is with a well defended remote. So you got to have a super defended remote, a super defended centrals. Your only reason that's even remotely possible is just because the runner is so bad with their little shiv. Yep, Corp's just taking money so he can res his ice if he needs to. Okay, I got a cyber feeder. It's going to help out my armitage in terms of money. And we're going to get this whale going. There was a lot of whales in the draft. If you wanted to make the ultimate Darwin deck, you could have done so easily. Just take all the cyber feeders, Darwin's personal touches, and... Woohoo! Forget your Crypsis. Just load up on Darwin's. I should have done that, because that's a deck I know how to play. Okay, here comes the remote that can't be broken into. And a card is installed into it. I don't do a very good job here of, of deciding when to bump up the whale's strength and when not to. So I should have just done it every turn, no matter what. But... Um, you know, I guess unless I was definitely 100% going to run that turn, um, I guess I should have always bumped the whale. But I think there were some turns where I didn't bump it and also didn't run. Um, I don't know. Only had one cyber feeder. If I had another one, it would have been much easier. Just bump every turn. Keep the pressure on. Okay, empty out the armitage. So I got mad money. So I'm using all twos there because Darwin, two per subroutine. So I can break six, seven subroutines. Uh, as long as the strength of the ice is less than or equal to one. <laughs> uh, which means I can get through that rotor turret for two. Um, but who knows what's in front of it. Uh, yeah. R&D even stronger. Darwin up. Good. That was a good turn to do that. See, I'm not running that. You think, oh, i got to run that remote, right? Well, no. I'm, I'm, anyone in the draft, I assume they're playing three-pointers. So unless he advances that, I'm not running it. Modded Morningstar. I think I'm so cool with that. Sorry for the glare. Usually my polarization filter takes care of that. I, you know, Morningstar is my only barrier breaker. Um, I drew it. I had a modded. So how could I resist dropping that bad boy on the table, right? That'll totally help out my whale big time. Uh, not having to, you know. Uh, yeah, as a marked accounts, imp that. Um... Thing is, apparently Chris told me he didn't he didn't draft any uh, <laughs> he didn't draft any barriers. So <laughs> I think it's like one barrier or something. So my morning star is rather silly. Okay, there's the rotor turret on HQ also. Woo! Okay, I use my Darwin, pay four credits, see one card, it's a scorch. Woo! Yeah. I think Chris just drafted the cards that he likes, right? These are like his favorite cards. Rotor Turret, <laughs> Scorched Earth, Hokusai Grid. He just took all his favorites. And you know what? That works. Get cards you're familiar with. If I would have done that, I probably would have done much better. <laughs> all right, here we go. Install Advance Advance. That is looking to me like an agenda because he's advanced it. What's underneath it, though? Could I've seen a lot of red herrings in the draft. So it very, I'm thinking red herrings. Um, so I got to get in there with five credits to spare. Oof. Oof. It's going to be rough. Well, maybe it's not a red herrings, right? Maybe it's a, maybe it's a Hokusai again. We've already seen one of those, and that's, that's a card Chris likes. There's only two ice on there. Hmm. Doubt he's got even another rotor turret. Strength three. I mean, he only has six credits, so I don't think he can really res anything too big. Plus, I do have the Morning Star, so you know I didn't know at the time he didn't have barriers, but 
Okay. So I'm infiltrating that. It's a corporate war. So it's only a two-pointer. So, and if he scores it right now, he only has six credits, and he'd go down, right? So he would lose the war. Seeing as how he would lose the corporate war if he scored it now, I know he's not going to score it this turn, which means I could chill out, of course. I infiltrated too late. And I think I could have boosted... Oh, I think that was a turn where I could have boosted Darwin, but didn't. I probably played that wrong. All right, so he's going to clear virus counters, which is annoying. It's telling me that, hey, he's got some ice stronger than one on that server. But he still can't score his corporate war this turn without losing the war, so I'm happy for him to score it here. So I'm still not going to run there, especially because there's something nasty under it. Either a red herring or a, um, a uh, hokusai. Or... Did I see any other upgrades during the draft? Trying to think, what other upgrade? I, I guess I saw the one Corbett Trouble Shooter that I passed up. I guess it could be that. Uh, okay, what did I put down there? Oh, that's a crash space. Yeah, because I already saw his scorched earth. So now I'm all crash spacey, right? And maybe if I see some, like a hunter, I'll just take the tag and then I can clear it with my crash space. Two crash spaces. Yeah, come at me now with your scorch. He ain't got nothing. Okay. Yeah, plus he's trying to build it. If, he, if I let him win the corporate war, which I'm probably going to do, right, he will, you know, if he has a sea source also, he will not be able to uh, use that. Okay, so now he's got nine credits. He can win the corporate war this time. Uh, okay, up goes the whale. Whale exercise. Pump it up. Get strong, whale. Lift them weights. Go, Darwin. Go, Darwin. Feed your cybers, cyber feeder, I'm a dog. All right, what am I going to do? I guess now he's going to, unless I can make him spend money, he's going to score the corporate war and win the war. I guess the right move here is at least I could run either R&D or the remote, force him to at least res ice, and jack out. Then, if he scores the court, he'll be back in the range of not being able to win the corporate war. But that's a play mistake on my part, right? I, I could have forced him to res ice, or I could have got myself an R&D access, uh, which could be worth a lot of points. So, But I don't do anything. I just uh, run archives and install two daily league reversals. Oh, yeah, look at that. Got two crash space and two daily reversal. So my new strategy is, look, he's already put three, four, five, six ice. That's probably close to half the ice in a draft deck, not on archives, right? Uh, if any of those are, he's got a scorch, so something's gonna tag me somewhere. He can't, probably can't trash all this stuff uh, at once, right? So I can probably go get a tag mill some cards, which is hugely dangerous. Okay, he wins the corporate war because I didn't force him to spend any money resing anything. You know, but maybe, you know, he's only got two points now. I'm thinking long game here, right? Let's set this up. Let's try to maybe get the milling machine going for the win, right? Instead of, you know, and, and I'll keep the Darwin going uh, on the side, right? Um, but I should be able to mill out... Uh, an agenda if I get these data leak reversals going. So, let's see. What's gonna happen? I forgot even whose turn it is. Oh, it's his turn. Install. He's just installing. I'm drawing my cards up. I probably should have made the whale bigger this turn. I didn't. Yep, that's another turn where I didn't increase the whale and didn't run. Bad move. Should have made the whale bigger. Oh, well. Make the whale bigger.
I've got pretty much all NR cards. <laughs> the advantage of drafting. No influence on anything. But great. I, I just took all these all the red cards. Plus two crash space. Uh oh. He advanced twice. Uh, that card he installed last turn is now too advanced. Danger. He go up to five. Maybe he's got a one-pointer somewhere. I don't know. So since I'm definitely going to run with my inside job, I take two and use the inside job, and I keep in the cyber feeder. A chum. Ooh. And then a hunter. So I inside jobbed over the chum, and I found the hunter. I don't care about the hunter, because I'll just take a tag, and I could remove that with my crash space. So I'll take the tag. I'll remove that and click forward with my crash space. And it's a Hokusai. All right. It is a Hokusai. I'll take my one damage. Crypsis. I don't really need that guy, Darwin. Uh-oh. It's... It's... I mean, you can't see it, but that's a Project Junebug. I had three cards left after the Hokusai. Not four. It was twice advanced. He had a credit. Game over. Game over. And I had a Deus Ex in this deck, too. If only I would have drawn it and played it. That would not have happened. Um... Damn. Well, <laughs> you know, that's the kind of stuff that's, that's going to happen. And I had an infiltration. I used the infiltration to see the corporate war, right? If I would have used the infiltration to see the June bug, well, that would have changed everything, wouldn't it? So that's that. That is that. Woo! Run and get killed. Hokusai plus June bug. I had five cards. I wasn't doing anything. No, I had four cards, right? So... Yeah, I guess I didn't, you know, it took both. He needed both of those things to actually get the kill. I'm glad I drafted a Junebug, because if I didn't, he probably would have two and more in his deck, but I guess however many he had was enough. Okay. My time to Corp after losing. So, you know, we didn't, we didn't take the draft super, super seriously. You saw, if you watched the drafting video, we ignored the rule about not looking at your cards um, that you had already picked while picking. You know, we... Uh, there wasn't necessarily scouting, like people being jerky trying to scout what other people had drafted. Um, but, I mean, we were basically all day talking to each other like hey i got i got a data sucker i got a corroder oh shit and we were watching each other's games you know i mean you paid a lot for this uh drafting tournament so people wanted to i guess you know to get their money's worth it's like you want to get all you know the experience you know other people's games as well as your own no one really cared so chris had watched a couple of my earlier games and he had seen on the table in those games, um, you know, that I had ice such as Draco and Data Hound that you saw me pick. And I had him stacked up. So, you know, seeing that I had ice like that, uh, that's going to... that influenced his play slightly uh, for some great excitement. Uh, exciting things are going to happen here. I'm actually anti-sleeve. Uh, you know, I'd much rather not use sleeves. I like just using regular cards. The reason, the only reason I sleeve the cards is because I had heard on the internet that someone at another draft sleeved their cards, and like the, the at another draft tournament, the top two players were the only people who sleeved. So I was thinking it might be a luck thing. Look at this. It's a drafting game. He install installed Beanstalk. I install install hedge fund. I only have one hedge fund in the deck. I am. I kept that hand. Holy crap! I kept that hand. How do you like that? Oh, he's got a sure gamble. Look at this. You would think that these were real Netrunner decks the way we're playing. Wow. Wow. Okay, so what's going to happen here? He has sure gamble, draw a card, modded toolbox. Whoa. 
See, he's playing that toolbox because he knows I've got all like Dracos and stuff like that. And that two link, that puts him over the top. Whoosh. Hostile takeover. Look at this draw. Incredible draw. Bad pub. So now I gave him a bad pub and two link. So he's super happy thinking he's going to hit uh, my ice with those weak ass traces on him. Right? Like my Dracos and whatnot. But I got a flare. Hedge fund plus hostile is enough money to res flare. It's trace six base. He's got two link. A bad pub and three credits. That matches the trace. I spend exactly one credit to make it trace seven. That means the flare will hit. The flare hits. Two meat damage and holy shit. The toolbox he spent his whole first turn on is gone. Oh, look at those two meat damage. Oh, I'm so glad I hit that medium. And that sneak door, those are high quality cards. Oh, running R&D. Oh, is he running R&D now? Yeah, he's running R&D now. Pop-up window. Oh, how good is that pop-up window? He uses the bad pub to break it, sees my oversight AI. So I'm giving him R&D accesses, but oh man, am I glad that medium is gone. If he would have just run R&D and saw the pop-up window first, Right? Then he would have been like, install medium, run R&D, run R&D, run R&D, and that flare situation would not have occurred. Um, and I might have lost. I almost definitely would have lost. So, but then again, maybe the flare would have still hit eventually, right? When he decided to run HQ, and uh, I would have had so much money from pop-up window, but no, the medium probably would have just killed me right away. Okay, so he runs, he sees my Victor 1.0. So, running R&D, I'm getting lucky. He's not seeing points there. I mean, I do have a low density, but I have three pointers, so. But yeah, he knows the ice I've got, so he knows how to play against the ice, because he sees all the ice that I'm, you know, he sees the ice as before I draw it, so he knows what that is, right? So he knows that that's Victor 1.0 right there. Or at least he can be pretty certain it is. Because uh, if I would have had an ice a turn earlier, I probably would have put it in front of the pop-up window. <laughs> Uh, so he puts a Crescentus, right, and he runs, and he's like, yeah, res your Victor for three, I'll double-click it and Crescentus it, and then, right, run again. So he, want, he can make me pay for the Victor twice with that Crescentus. So I'm not going to pay for the Victor, I'm just going to let the pop-up window happen. And there's another ice. Uh, I couldn't really see what it was. Draw it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess there's not really anything I can do about the Crescentus, but I can set up this remote. Come on, remote. Do your magic, remote. Okay. Install, install, take credit. He's running my remote. I don't res. It's an encryption protocol. He lets me keep it. I basically just put the encryption protocol there to, um, you know, make him spend a click. He runs. He gets rid of the victor. He Crescentus is as predicted. Gets his R&D access. More ice. Oof. You know, maybe there was a benefit to putting way too much ice in this deck. Well. Alright. What now? The reason I iced the encryption protocol was, was not only to, you know, because that would make it more enticing for him to run, but it's like if I drop pad campaigns, well, the right, you know, uh, to get protected by the protocol, the right move is usually to... You know, trash the... Okay, so now I can res the victor. He's run R&D. Uh, the right move for the runner is to trash the encryption protocol, then trash all the other things. If the encryption protocol is protected, then I can sort of maintain the tax on him. Um, and if I somehow get some spare ice, I can use that to protect the pad campaigns. I mean, in draft and regular Netrunner, I'm beginning to see it's a really good idea to just put one ice in front of each economic asset. So... I'm not getting the economic assets, really, that are in my deck. I should have drafted more of them, maybe. Uh, so I'm just using the encryption protocol server as... I'm going to use that as my scoring server. I've already spent a click to put an ice there. I'll just throw the encryption protocol away when I get something to put in the server. And let's ice it up even more, right? We need this to be super secure and replace the... Crypto protocol. 
Okay, looking good. Does he have the Crypsis, or what does he have? A Fem! Oh, he Femmed HQ. Uh-oh. That's the ultimate killer for her. He just was saving up for that. He was saving up for it. And... Sees my data hound. Run HQ again. My Vitruvius, no! At least it's only two points, not three. Run HQ again. Data hound. Main toy draw. All right. Accelerated beta test. And you know what? My deck does have a shit ton of ice. I'm thinking about doing it. I'm thinking about doing it. I'm doing it. And what do we have here? So one card is not an ice. The other cards are Enigma. Ooh, protect that R&D. And oh, shit, the Archer. I don't have to lose my hostile takeover. Complete random nonsense. Oh, shit, son. Accelerated beta test. Archer, Enigma. Who, that could be a three-pointer in the trash, but, you know. So he's running the trash. <laughs> he knows. Uh, nope, it was a private contracts. Oh, yeah. You ain't getting back into HQ. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. HQ is super secure, which makes me want to draw to get agendas into a super safe place. Well, I guess he can get, like, he can get through once, right? He can, there's no way for him to move the fem. I guess he could install another one, but then he's getting into HQ for five. Well, bad pub, four credits. It's still, it is, well, he could let me have two credits each time and get in for, oh, no, because if he fems it, he would have to pay for all subroutines. And that, uh, okay, throw it out of mem chip. I guess the one bad thing about an ABT archer is that um, it's just not possible to surprise anyone with it. So it's probably not going to trash any programs, but I just needed to defend that wide open HQ because I'm holding three pointers, right? And that Enigma doing a pretty good job on uh, the R&D there, right? It's like if he runs the Enigma... You know, there's a Victor. He can break the Victor with clicks, but if there's Enigma in front of it, he's gotta he, he's gonna want to break the click, lose a click subroutine, and then there's a pop-up window. It's so Enigma in front of Victor is just a really good placement. Super lucky accelerated beta test. I only have one of those. I could have had more of those, right? I think that might be a good draft strategy: is get accelerated beta tests. Oh, deja vu, sneak door. Uh oh. Oh no, I did not expect, I did not think there was a way to get shit out of the trash. I forgot that there was deja vu. Draco. See, I've been, since I've been in such a safe position, oversight. Since my position has been so safe on the table here, um, I was just sort of holding on, trying to take credits until I could afford to do this. Install advanced advance. So now I have enough money to res my ice on the server. And if I do res the ice on the server, the remote, I will still have enough money left over to score the agenda uh, by advancing it. I've already got three points. Just need three more. And that will be GG. He's got four clicks. He runs. Sneak door. Uh oh, it's five to three. Woo! Oof. Yeah, that sneak door. I think that was the only other agenda in my hand, right? So it's like, okay, so three, six. I think there's only three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think there's only the agenda that are in the server. And there's one agenda left in all of R&D, and that's all the agendas in the whole deck. So I'm like, I'll just let him sneak door this three-pointer. If it means I can score the three-pointer on the table, that's game over. So I am, I'll just take it. Yeah, go for it. Uh, he's got two clicks left. Two clicks left. What to do?
Run the remote. He's running. Wall static. Bonk. Bonk. If he's got an inside job, he can make me res another ice. I only got two credits there. Um, I mean, I have five, but if I want to keep three to score the three-pointer, then I can't spend more than two on the other ice on that server. Sneak door. Nope. And a win. Yeah. What an epic game right there. The flare on the toolbox. The comeback with the femme sneak door to score five. The accelerated beta test for the archer and the enigma. Just locking everything up. Oh. He could have done a notoriety, right? Um, if he had a Gord, right, because basically R&D was a stack of code gates. So if he would have gotten his Gordian Blade, he could have run R&D with the, with the Gordian Blade easily, right? Then, yep, I'm showing him there's only one agenda left in the whole deck. Um, he could have run R&D easily, run Archives, and then use Sneak Door and scored a Notoriety, which would have won him the game. It's very lucky he didn't have the Gordian, right? So even with that super lockup... Um, yeah, I was in grave danger there of him winning by notoriety on the next turn or two. Oof. Managed to put the agenda in at just the right time. Not too early, not too late. Wall static, really strong in draft, man. Really strong. So there you go. Uh, that's the good part about drafting, right, is that you can make exciting Netrunner games like this. Most of the reason they're exciting is because you have usually have a three-pointer. You only play in a six. Each agenda is super important, right? Um, and uh, you have to score them. You know, it's it's not easy to fast advance. You know, you don't maybe you got a biotic labor and a sand sand at most. Um, maybe two or one or one of each or something like that. And it's hard to afford to use them too. Where are you going to get all this money from? So you're usually stall advance, advance in a remote, and then seeing what happens, right? Can they get in? Can they not get in? They've, you know, everyone's got Crypsis. If they've got enough credits and virus counters, they can usually get in. How do you how do you make them lose all that so that you can score? Create a scoring window. And you have to res a big ice. Can you can you make it happen? So I hope you enjoyed these games that would probably not be possible uh, if it were not for the drafting format.